So now you've heard the state's response, you've heard the VA's response. So because we're really dealing with veterans that are in the incarcerated uh, system, in the criminal justice system, what is the court's response? And all throughout the day, we've heard about veterans' courts and what they are. So now I think it's time for two people to come and present. I don't know how they're splitting their time, so I'll introduce both of them. But uh, Judge Millage is a uh, uh, former military, and he has started the Youngstown Veterans Treatment Court, and he co-chairs the task force for the Attorney General on Veterans, and Mil Vel veterans Courts and Military Affairs. And he has just done a marvelous job with that group up there in Youngstown, and connecting dots up there, and working with us on a statewide level. And Melissa Knopp, I've worked with, she was actually involved in the very first meeting I ever had with the 10 people I mentioned earlier. Uh, she heads our specialized docket section. She has been my partner all through the years on getting mental health courts going. She's very familiar with the drug court model, and many other specialized dockets. She is program manager for the entire specialized docket section. Ohio is now moving a little bit to certification. What we were finding more and more is that uh, agencies, funders, foundations would call us and say, give us a list of your approved specialized dockets, drug court, mental health courts. We didn't have any approved list if you wanted to be when you called yourself one, and so funders were giving us a hard time about not having standards. And so we put together very basic criteria to get certified. It's not hard to do, but it helps bring fidelity to the process, and it really helps with the funding process and getting grants if you could be on the list and then say you're a certified court. And so Melissa's going to explain a little bit about how that works and how veterans courts fall into that picture as well. So I'm going to let the two of them split the time as they see best and uh, give us the court response. Good afternoon. Um, as Justice Stratton said, I'm Melissa Knopp. I'm the manager of the Specialized Docket Section. Uh, the way Judge Millage and I are going to proceed is I'm just going to give a general overview of what's going on with the court and with certification in particular, and then he's going to go into greater detail on how his program operates and those kind of things. Um, so veterans courts, we've only had them around for a few years. As many of you know, they are based on the specialized docket model, with the first specialized docket being a drug court. Um, the reason or why we started looking at veterans courts um, was because we noticed that with this group in particular of offenders coming through, um, they were different than the other people that we're dealing with. Um, and different, in, not in a bad way, but in a very good way. Um, a lot of the things, the crimes that we're seeing uh, this group of folks commit are really low-level crimes and really are traceable back to their service in the military. Um, so, as Justice Stratton said, I had two judges approach us um, saying that they wanted to create veterans courts, Judge Millage and um, Judge Aldup in Mansfield. Um, right now, we know we have more than three operating veterans courts in the state, but we at the Supreme Court stopped recognizing programs at the end of last year in preparation for certification. So the only courts we do officially recognize at this point are Hamilton County Common Pleas Court, Judge Millage's Court, Youngstown Municipal Court, and Judge Alt's Court in Mansfield Municipal. Starting January 1st, when the standards go into effect and the courts are required to start filing their applications for certification, uh, we know that the number in this area will really grow uh, drastically. Um, some of the initiatives that we have going on, we've been working with uh, Judge Millage. Um, we have what we call the Ohio Specialized Docket Practitioner Network, which is a group that we divided the specialized dockets up by discipline. Uh, we bring them to Columbus for roundtable meetings um, so that they can discuss some of the issues, the challenges, and the successes they've had in developing their programs. Uh, in that group, we just started a group that are the veterans courts. Uh, we had a meeting about three weeks ago, and um, we had very good attendance. I think we had about 40 people in attendance at that meeting. So we know there's a lot of interest, and um, we're really looking forward to start working with this group of courts in particular um, a lot more closely. Uh, as far as certification goes, um, I go back in front of the Supreme Court on November 14th for final adoption of the certification process. Um, what that will entail is each court will be required to submit an application. In addition, their program description, their participant uh, handbook, their participation agreement, and a copy of either their local rule or their administrative order. Um, the Advisory Committee on Specialized Dockets, which was responsible for developing the standards, is actually going to get promoted to a commission and will be the final arbiter of whether a program is certified or not. Uh, so the way it will work is my staff will go out, we'll fill out the reports, we'll submit the materials to the commission. 
Um, if a court um, doesn't agree with the recommendation that we provide to the commission, they'll have an opportunity to appear in front of them, kind of say their piece, and then the final decision of the commission uh, will be the final decision. There will be no appeals process. Uh, the standards are very basic. Um, they've been around for a very long time. They deal with things like uh, how often the judge must see the offenders. Uh, they look at what type of treatment the offenders are going into, making sure that it's evidence-based. Um, they look at how the supervision is handled by the court, uh, training issues, data collection. So by the end of next year, which when all the courts will be required to be certified, um, we should start being able to collect some good data on these programs also.